Hello! In this video, we are going to attempt to argue the very unpopular opinion that hang-on sails are better than roller furling. Now, we want this video to be sort of more of a discussion, so really the majority of the speaking is going to be in the comment section down below. We'd love to hear your opinion, whether you've had both, or which one you prefer, hank on or roller furling. Do you agree with us, or do you prefer your roller furling, and why? Okay, so this video is specifically looking at ocean sailing, not coastal sailing. For coastal sailing, roller furling is awesome. It's easy, it's simple, keeps your deck clear, and if anything breaks, there's a ton of people around you that can fix it for you, so you don't have to worry about it. For ocean sailing, it's a totally different story. Our boat Wisdom is a cutter rig, and we have Hank on head sails. However, we used to have roller furling, so we feel we can speak for both. Also, it helps that Herbie is a rigger, and knows a lot about both hank-on and roller furling head sails. Now the biggest argument against hank-on sails is probably the amount of work that it takes rather than roller furling. I must say that on our journeys, especially across the Atlantic, the work did not bother us at all. Um, it actually was a little bit of a blessing because it gave us something to do. Although I think that you'll find once we've talked about it that they actually kind of equal each other out in the amount of work in the long run. So what is hank on and what is roller furl furling? What do I mean by that? Hank on simply means that the sail is attached to the stay by hanks and hanks are they can either be made out of Velcro and the other ones are bronze clips and you have to go through and you have to connect each one individually when you attach the sail to the stay. Now, the one of the reasons that hank on sails get a bad rep for being a lot of work is people for some reason unhank their sails every time they come back to port and then when they want to go sailing you have to go out and hank each hank on and each one has to be done individually and it's it's a lot of hanks and it's a lot of work. So yes, there it's a lot of work. But just how your roller furling has the umbrella cover on it and you furl it up and then forget about it, you can make a sail bag for your hank on sails, which is what we did, and then there, the work is gone. Like, the sail is already there. So all you have to do is hoist it. You don't have to hank it on. A furling sail, however, is attached to the stay via a foil which is a metal tube that surrounds the stay and allows the sail to kind of wrap around it. Therefore, you never have to take the sail off the stay itself. It simply furls up when you're done with it and unfurls when you want to use it. That can create some problems, though. One of the bigger issues that you'll have with a furling sail is in a lot of wind, when you want to make your sail smaller, there's so much pressure on the sail that then you have a lot of resistance in the furler itself and you actually have trouble bringing it in. So when I was working in Baltimore as a rigger, most of my jobs were actually fixing furlers because they'd have a bad storm, they couldn't get the sail in, they ended up then having to drop the sail, which is something that they're not practiced at, and then they had a whole bunch of problems with it. As a rigger, have you ever had to fix a problem caused by hank on sails? No, actually. Yeah, uh, some people talk about the issue of the hanks chafing on your head stay and that the metal on metal contact will end up destroying the stay. That is false because your stay is made out of uh, stainless steel, either 304 or 316, and the hank is made out of bronze. And it's intentionally set up that way because bronze is softer than steel. So the hank gets destroyed over a lot of time and the stay stays totally fine. I learned something. So. So that's kind of the, the downside with a furler in heavy weather. And the other thing that can happen is the whole thing is relying on a teeny tiny little rope that's going to hold it from coming apart. So when you furl your sail in, it's real common to see in a marina just a sail shredded. And it's because the furling line broke, the sail unfurled, and just got destroyed in the wind because no one was around to bring it in. The way hank on sails work in a storm is if you need to drop your sail you drop it. There's nothing else to it. The sail comes down, but 
you have a downhaul. And downhauls, a lot of people don't know what those are. They're a line that attaches to the head of the sail so that if wind pressure is keeping your sail up and you need to get it down quickly, you simply grab this downhaul, pull, and gently and gracefully the sail will come down and it's not a big deal. Then you just tie the downhaul securely to the boat so that the sail can't lift back up in the wind and you've dropped your sail. A lot of times people think that in order to drop the sail they have to go forward to the tippy tip of the bow in order to pull the sail down. But that is, as Maddie said, where the downhaul comes in. And the downhaul doesn't have to stay up at the bow. Ours is led aft to the mast which is where the halyards are. So we can release the halyard and then there's a little turning block at the tack and we can just pull the downhaul in and the sail just comes right down. Now that's how it goes in heavy winds. In light winds, it's a very different story. There's no pressure to get it down as quickly as possible. And I can just go up, do my thing, bring the sail down, and then we can hank on the drifter, which is the sail that we use in very light winds, right on top of the other sail. So there's no problem with the sails overlapping or getting tangled or anything like that. And you can actually switch your sails just like that. Bring down the jib and put up the drifter right on top of it. With roller furling, you can have multiple sails that you run because you can just drop the sail, put the next one in the left groove, pull it up. It's so much work people don't do it. And the big thing, say that there's, Maddie was explaining, you go from light, and you're in light winds, so you want to take down your 100% jib and put up your Genoa. Well, now you got to drop the sail, bag it, that whole mess, and now your Genoa's up. So great, you got your 150 up. Then the wind picks up, and you want to go back to your smaller sail. You have to open your whole Genoa up in the heavy weather to get it down in order to put up your smaller head sail. You're not going to do that. That's that's dangerous. So then what you end up doing is you run with your sail partially reefed. And they talk about roller reefing where they put foam pads in the luff to help fix it. And the reason it needs fixing is because it doesn't really work. The sails end up being really baggy. They don't have their shape properly. So even though you take your giant Genoa and only let out a little bit, it doesn't work as well as a properly cut jib for that wind condition. There is the matter of wind resistance when it comes to a single stay versus a furled on sail. Again, if you have hang on sails, you simply drop your sail and it's this small little bundle at the bottom of your stay. Whereas if you have roller furling, the mass of your entire sail remains on that stay, which really affects the amount that you will heal uh, in heavy winds. And that's just a matter of comfort. So when you have all that mass really high up on the head stay, you then have a lot more leverage up there and it's all this weight aloft that's going to pull you over and you're going to need a lot more riding moment to counter that, which you don't add riding moment to a sailboat. That is the ballast in your keel. That's, that's a set thing. So the more you add on the top of your mast, the more weight you have aloft pulling you over. So you add all that weight plus the wind resistance of this furled sail on the head stay and it's going to pull you over. So then you can have even less sail up because you're trying to not heal so badly in a storm, but it's going to happen anyway. You can drop everything, but that mass is still up there. With Hank on, it comes down, it's done. The other thing was when I would do rig inspections, the nightmares I found on their furlers. So it's safely tucked away, no one sees it, no one thinks about it. I'd find turnbuckles with no cotter pins. I'd find turnbuckles that came apart so they technically had no headstay. And the luff of their Genoa was acting as a headstay. Like insane things that you would never dream of going sailing on, commonplace. Where if you have Hank on, every time you go and you look at your stay, you are visually directly looking at your stay. Everything is out in the open. So you can see it and then you can keep tabs on it. And if something starts to go bad, you'll catch it way before a problem actually arises. Most people have steel rigging because that's, that's the norm. So stainless steel gets work hardened every time it gets hit or, or banged. Now, if you have a stay that's just sitting there, there's no impact on it because it's just out in the elements, which isn't great either. Now, you take the foil and it's wrapped around it and it's just bashing around, tapping it, banging it, the stay ends up getting so work hardened. Uh, in Australia, for example, insurance companies won't insure your boat unless you have your head stay replaced every two years. Uh, it's, it's insane. Where normally for standing rigging, it's a 10 year replacement period. 
So it might sound like we're just bashing on roller furling, that it's just not good compared to hank on. That's because to us who have had both, we actually had roller furling for a long time before we switched to hank on. Having had both, we can safely say that we personally much prefer hank on sails. It's a little bit more work, it sounds like, in the beginning. However, in the long term, it's a lot less work. It's much easier to handle, and it has a lot less that can possibly go wrong. When it comes to, is equipment good or not, you have to look at what happens when it breaks and how do you fix it. With your hank on sails, if it breaks, it means that your sail either won't go up because your halyard broke, or else your sail's going to fall down because your sail won't stay up. Like, I guess maybe one of the hanks could break. One of the hanks could break, but if they do, you You've have a ton others. Others, you, yeah, yeah you're, you're it's fine. not going to be an issue. Uh, I mean, get it fixed, but mm -hmm. you'll be able to sail back to port. If your roller furling breaks, either your sail won't come out, which is actually the best situation of them all, or your sail comes out and won't go back in. Which is the worst situation. Yeah. And I've read all sorts of crazy ways to fix your my sail came unfurled business one was actually suggesting that you motor in circles to make the sail furl back onto the stay like, like that is how <laughs> hopeless this sounds so imagine you're in a storm you got 20 foot seas and now you have to be circling <laughs> no <laughs> so then all these situations end with you probably just have to cut your sail and bring it down and i've heard worse stories where people actually have to cut the sail and just cut it off their force day to get it to go. Like they just start cutting and then let the wind just rip it off. Now we do realize that most people have roller furling sails. Yeah, they're easy. So if you, I'm sure you probably have roller furling sails and we don't mean to bash your boat or your decisions or anything like that. We're simply trying to show you that hank on sales can actually be a great alternative if you ever want to make any changes in your in your design. We do realize this is the unpopular opinion, but maybe it has served as a little bit of an educational experience so you can make a more informed decision next time you look at boats. Now hank on sales are not perfect. Like there have been times when it's been really windy and we're on a run and it'd be nice to have just a wee bit of head sail out, like just put a little triangle. And we can't because it's, you know, put up the whole sail or a reef sail. But either way, you have to go up to forward on the bow to do that because you have to get a set. So in those cases, yeah, we've actually wished we had roller frilling. But those have been very, very few and far between. Most of the time, it's, you know, you go up to raise your main and while you're there, you raise your jib. It's... It's no big deal. When I started sailing, I had a roller furling Genoa, and then I had the stay sole, which was, on, which was Hank on, and I preferred the stay sole over the roller furling all the time. Like I'd hardly ever put out the roller furling because it was just such a cumbersome thing to deal with. And then when I switched from roller furling to Hank on, like life got so much better. Like just life at anchor is a lot more stable because the boat's not being thrown around. Because you figure you have a hundred pound sail all the way up the mast. It's, that's a lot of weight aloft while you're anchored. It's not necessary. So if we had to say one positive about roller furling, it's just that your deck is a lot less messy. Everything's neatly tucked away. You don't have this big old lump at the bottom of your head stay. So yay for that, but um, we recommend Hank on Sales. Hopefully this video has maybe changed your mind about roller furling. If not, we love to hear your opinion in the comments section because we're always looking to have a discussion and everybody has a different style of sailing and different experiences that instill in them the preferences that they have. So if you prefer roller furling over hank on, please let us know why. We'd love to hear your story. If you prefer Hank on, again, let us know. We really like to hear your experiences and how they've shaped the way that you sail. Oh, look, we're both wearing uh, Rigging Doctor shirts. Yes. Let's have a, a shameless plug. Yes, <laughs> Sailing by the Stars. Red right returning. <laughs> Guys, if you like our uh, sweatshirt and shirt here, you can find a whole bunch of our merchandise and fun sailing 
puns and things like that uh, at our store, which is listed in the description of this video. It's the Teespring link, so do check it out. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. And if you'd like to follow our journey in real time on a map, receive postcards from our ports of call, and messages directly to the boat, you can go ahead and become a patron using the link in the description down below.